all, Farmer Jesse here. Uh, since my last video was kind of heavy and serious and I was crying, oh, my last video was about Living Pathways? What am I thinking of? Today I thought I would lighten it up a little bit and make the case for soil blocks on a commercial scale. So let's do it. Yeah, I don't know what lighten it up means. Nobody's ever explained it to me. All right, first things first, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It's that little red one. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. Here's the thing, like here, soil blocks. This is our preferred method of starting seeds, of starting transplants. Um, we also use some wind strips, which I'll talk about maybe in another video, uh, but we no longer use cell trays. That isn't to say that good starts can't be started in cell trays. Obviously people like JM Fortier use a lot of cell trays and others, and they've had a lot of success with them. I'm gonna talk about kind of why we don't like them and maybe why other people don't use soil blocks. Just a little background here, soil blocks are not new. I first learned about them from Elliot Coleman's The New Organic Grower, uh, but they're not new by any means. They've been using them, for example, down in the Chinampas forever. Uh, basically pulling soil out of canals and making soil blocks out of that. It's a very ancient way of starting seeds because back in the day, they didn't have cell trays. But why do most growers not use them? This is an important question. Uh, I think there are several reasons for that. One, uh, there are some misconceptions about how soil blocks hold up or how they perform. Uh, there are some there's a little bit of a learning curve to making them, um, and there's this perception that they're a little bit slower. Uh, let's talk about all of those things. So to make good soil blocks, you really need good soil mix. If you do not have good quality soil mix, the soil blocks are not gonna hold together. You can make your own, but you should follow, for instance, the guidance of Elliot Coleman in The New Organic Grower, has a decent recipe in there. If you add too much of the aerating element, so perlite or sand, they will fall apart. Um, if you add too little of that, they will become anaerobic and your seeds won't do well. So you wanna make sure to follow that recipe. Otherwise, just get a good soil mix. You can use ProMix, you can use Vermont Compost. We've been using Tilth Soil. Uh, New England Compost Company has a great soil mix. There are a lot of different good soil mixes out there. So you can seek out a good soil mix. Almost every single commercial soil mix will work for this. We've never run into one that doesn't work for soil blocks. Second thing. The moisture is key. You have to have it more wet than you probably feel comfortable. Uh, you have to moisten it first before you start making your blocks. If they're too dry, it will fall apart. Um, moisten it to the point that you can actually squeeze water out of it, like it runs wet. Um, I've heard it compared to oatmeal. I think that's pretty close, but I almost like it a little bit more wet. I generally just advise to err on the side of too wet because it's, it's just pretty easy to add a little bit of extra dry material to sop up some of the extra moisture. In that way, you're almost guaranteeing that you're getting good blocks. If you form the blocks and you put them out on the tray and they just kind of melt, they're too wet. Well, it's gonna take you a little time to get used to it. That's where the learning curves comes in. With a little practice, you should be fine. I wanna talk about the speed element. So if you're using just hand blockers, and we use these for years, if you're using just hand blockers though, we no longer use these, but these take about 90 seconds per 10 by 20 tray, right? That's not super fast. I wouldn't say that's a whole lot slower than this, maybe a little bit slower than just put it filling like a 120 with soil mix, um, but it's not super slow. This, this is the blocker we now use. It's a little bit more expensive. I don't remember, it's in the 200 something dollar range. I'll put it on the screen. Um, this is the most valuable tool we have in terms of how much time it saves. So like I said, 90 seconds for a soil block, a hand blocker, this standing blocker, 15 seconds a tray. Super fast. So three or four trays in the time that it would take to make one tray with the hand blockers, or for that matter, a couple trays like this and that puts about 105 cells on a, tr on a tray. Now, one of the big misconceptions that we run into a lot is that people just can't conceive of these things staying together, but I promise you, they stay together just fine, as long as, like I said, the moisture level is pretty good, um, not too wet, but definitely not too dry, and that the soil mix is pretty decent. That's it, that's all it takes, and that you pack them tightly enough. If you just kind of squeeze them out and they, they don't form an actual crisp block, um, they won't work as well. 
And there is also the four inch blocker. We don't use this one either anymore. We've started using just our hands to make form little blocks, balls around the soil blocks when we want to pop them up. I did a video about this, but basically we're just taking the block out, patting a bunch of soil mix around it, and then putting it back on a tray. And as long as you don't move big blocks, even the four inch blocks like this, around immediately, like let some roots sort of occupy them, they don't fall apart. Um, don't put them in the back of a truck and drive around. Let me learn that lesson for you. It's also important when you're making soil blocks, especially with these hand blockers, less so with the big standing blocker, that you actually rinse after every single plunge. So you fill it, you scrape off the bottom, you make it flat, plunge it onto the tray, and then you rinse this in water and do it again. That'll keep it from sticking and just, it'll allow you to make crisper soil blocks if you so want to, if you're making, if you're using these hand blockers. With the standing blocker, I don't find that to be as necessary for whatever reason. Now, one of the other complaints or things that people say is that they co-mingle, right? Like that the, the, you kind of rip these apart, so you're sort of ripping these roots apart. Um, we've never seen that to really be an issue. They do form into the other blocks, the roots do go into the other blocks, but that is rarely an issue. The only way that I would think it would be an issue is if you leave them in there for a really long time, way longer than they should, um, than they should be in the blocks, or two, if they are something like cucurbits that, well, that you can't mess with the roots too much or the plant dies. Um, Otherwise, for lettuces, for kales, for vast majority of stuff we grow, it's never an issue. Like in the tray, it looks like they almost fuse together, but like I said, um, they still keep their integ integrity, so you can pull them apart pretty easily. And that pull them apart pretty easily thing is extremely critical because when I first tried cell trays, remember I learned how to farm with soil blocks. When I first started tried cell trays, I was blown away at how obnoxious those things are to transplant. These, with a cell tray, you either have to pull the plant out, which you lose plants that way, and you also damage the plant root and it maybe creates a little bit more transplant shock, um, or you have to pop them out of the bottom. That is a whole step and a whole problem you don't get with soil blocks. We take the tray out of the greenhouse, out to the field, and we transplant. They don't get as bad of transplant shock, in our experience, uh, as cell trays do, and we, they don't need as much hardening off time. Um, that makes it so fast to just take those out and just pull them out of the tray and put them immediately into the ground. Now, one place I can't really make any big claims about is performance. I haven't found any significant studies on whether or not soil blocks outperform cell trays. If you get your blocks out of your cells before they get root bound, they should be fine. But that's another thing that I really like about soil blocks is the pressure to get them out of the soil, to get them out into the field is less. You're not as likely to get any sort of root bound issues because they're air pruning. You notice that the roots are not going around and around. They're air pruning, so they're stopping when they feel air or they're going into the other blocks, but they're not wrapping around and around and around. So that means that if you leave them in the tray for longer, which you can, for weeks longer than you can in a cell tray, they're not gonna, it's not gonna deteriorate the quality as much as it would in a cell tray. One place that I think they're kind of inferior, at least without the right equipment, is that soil blocks are kind of a pain in the ass to seed. I will admit that. It probably exists, somebody has probably built it, but I don't have any good mechanism for doing like a drop seeder or a vacuum seeder with a soil block maker. So if you're making a lot of soil blocks, it is a little bit more tedious to put the seeds in. Um, I don't find it so tedious that it's a deal breaker. In my mind, all the other advantages, being able to transplant faster, uh, the growth quality, to me that all makes it worth it. It is a little bit of a trade-off, but there's always a trade-off. There's always a trade-off in farming. There's no perfect tool. It doesn't exist, it's never going to exist it's always gonna have something that could be better. So maybe somebody's invented one of those sort of drop seeder of some sort. If they have, let me know, that'd be cool. Anyway, that's my spiel. I've gotta to get to soil block making. It's kinda of why I wanted to talk about it. Like this video if you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or aspirations or machines that make soil blocks that I could trial. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.